Hello, everyone. Uh, we meet again in somewhat strange circumstances, though after almost three years, we're starting to get familiar, uh, almost too, too much so, with this uh, COVID environment. But um, the good news is that we're all working and making art, and that much of what we need to know can be conveyed, at least for the time being, on these video demonstrations that I'm doing. And today, the video demonstration is uh, at the beginning of our ceramics courses, this idea of um, making a pinch pot, a little bit different than the one we've made already, but the next level, which is to make a pinch pot and then begin to add elements and shape and create something, uh, create a construction that has a lot of um, uh, focus and clarity and begins to sing its own song um, as something of uh, an object of integrity. So how do we do that? How do we start with a lump of clay, which I have here, and begin to work with it? And um, one of the secrets, I think, is that you just don't stop until you can start hearing that song, the way that something actually declares itself in the world. Um, and your intentions focused on the piece, you keep refining and developing. You look at it as you're working. If something doesn't look the way you intended, then you change it. And if something looks great, you think about, can I make it even stronger? And if not, you leave it. And so you keep coming at it until it is uh, completely realized. And one of the other things that you do in this is that you, you play with the clay and pay attention to the clay as it goes through its various changes. So it starts out very plastic and flexible, which is good for certain aspects of the shaping. And then we need to go from there into something a little less, um, a little stiffer. And so then we find ourselves um, working with the clay in a uh, more uh, stiffer state. We let it dry for a while, it becomes leather hard. Still somewhat flexible, a little stiff, and, uh, and easy to join without marring too much. So we use that. And at the very end, it becomes bone dry um, and it's very stiff. And we can smooth and scrape and finish the piece in that state. So as ceramic artists, we need to get uh, an understanding of these various states, plastic, leather hard, and then bone dry. And plastic is pretty clear, it's soft and flexible, though there's many ranges. There's kind of a stiff plastic and a, and a, a, very, to, to a very, very soft plastic. Um, uh, and then, um, then in leather hard, there are many, many, many subtle variations on uh, so quite flexible, a little bit stiff to very stiff and almost inflexible and crackable. So, uh, and then bone dry is bone dry. It has one state. Um, so we're going to learn about all that. We're also going to learn how to join things. Um, there's a lot that we learn in this exercise. So we're going to start by make sure, making a couple of pinch pots. And so I'm going to direct the camera down to my working area here. Let's see if I can get it to move. There we go. And this should be um, pretty clear as a as a working area, there we go. And so now I'm gonna get some clay here and I don't need much. One of the things with a pinch pot is that you kind of wanna stay in control of the form. And if you get too large, like for instance, this is, this is probably a pound and a half or two pounds of clay. And that's too much. You want about half this, um, even less in order to create your um, your piece. So I'm going to take a little bit off and try to get too close to the same size and you'll see what I do with those. So now this is uh, somewhere around three quarters of a pound or half a pound, I'm guessing. So now notice that when I'm not using clay, I keep it covered up in a plastic bag. And that has a real that has a real function that keeping it covered in plastic is really important because what that does is it keeps the clay from drying out. And as we discussed, clay goes through various states and we wanna be the, the, the determiners of what those states are. So here you can see I've, I've made a ball of clay. I need two of them because for this project, 
I'm going to make um, two, two pinch pots and put them together to create a, a body of what I'm going to make. Now, in this assignment, you're asked to make a human or animal form uh, with your pinch pots. And um, I'm gonna show you a little bit about that. I've kind of picked a target based on an old Iranian pot that I have um, uh, been inspired by. Here's an example of it right here. This is uh, a variation of that pot. And you can see I've worked on it a few times. I have the speaker for this presentation sitting in another one over there. So I've made them over the years, a few of them. And um, they're really kind of exciting. Um, as you can see here, this one has uh, a body. We gotta think about the parts we need. So we need a body that's gonna be made out of two pinch pots. And we need four legs um, and we need a hollow neck and a hollow head here. And then a spout, or not a spout, this is sort of a, a, a lip here and a, a shoulder is right here. And then we have this kind of neck here that makes uh, the top of this uh, kind of picture form. And we can add a handle that also functions visually as a kind of tail of the piece. So that's what I'm thinking about. And it's important to know kind of where we're going because I need all those parts to be made. So as I look at this, this is feeling a little bit larger than I need. So I'm gonna take a little bit of clay off and set it aside. I'm gonna start a little smaller. It's okay to, to be intimate in scale. Um, and if you, if you work on it um, with that, with the kind of focus, you can make something quite monumental and present, something quite uh, significant. So that's what we're working on. So, I now have these two balls and I'm gonna start the pinch pot process, which I really love for so many reasons. Uh, mainly the, just the, the walking in the footsteps of the ancients because pinch pots are really one of the first forms of ceramic uh, expression. So I'm gonna start with just pushing my thumb in the middle here. And this clay is very soft, so I could go right through it. And some people do, they push their thumb right to the middle, but I prefer, as you can see, I've gone around a couple times now and I've barely got a dent in it there. And that's what I'll do. I'll just do a little push and a turn and a push and a turn and push and a turn. And what I'm doing here is actually predicting the emergence of perhaps the ceramic wheel that uh, some of you will be working with when we get back together. Um, the idea of the ceramic wheel is that the clay spins and you hold your hand steady. But what we're doing here is we're putting uh, pressure on the piece and then we're turning it a little bit and putting another little push. And those pushes, what's really important is that the increment of turn is the same each time. I'm just turning it the same amount, just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, all the way around. And the that's important. The other thing that's important is that, um, that I'm overlapping the previous push and that will make it extremely, you can see how, how symmetrical that is and how round that is. And that's a product of me um, working with the piece very uh, consistently and um, just pushing and turning and pushing and turning. And uh, the overlap of my, my compression uh, from the previous keeps a nice even effect. Now, when I get down to the bottom here, I wanna make sure I don't make it too thin because that is the base of the piece. In the previous one, I left this kind of thick because I knew I was gonna carve a foot. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm going, to, um, I'm going to keep this solid and I'm gonna build the whole piece um, with, I'm gonna put feet on it. So I don't need to carve a foot in this form. So I want it to be thinner than, than the previous pinch pot that we saw. And now I've begun the actual motion where the, the, the pot gets its name, a pinch pot. So I'm pinching, and again, a slight turn and a little squeeze, a slight turn and a little squeeze, a slight turn and a little squeeze. And each time my, my turn is so small that I'm overlapping the previous squeeze. And that's gonna keep it a very even wall. That's really important. Um, that we keep it an even wall. And then I'll move from here, I'll move my fingers up a little bit and then I'll start doing it again. And just squeezing a little bit. This helps move the clay up, um, kind of extending the clay. And 
it also um, it helps thin out the piece as well and uh, strengthens it because I'm squeezing it consistently, uh, compressing the clay. So um, I've gone around, um, usually you go around a couple of times. I'll go a little bit more here on, towards the lip. And then um, now for my piece, I want this to be wider. If I hold it like this, it will continue to grow this way. So the clay, this is an important principle to be thinking about. Clay only does what you do to it. So you'll see constantly the clay reflecting back at you the results of your action. So now I'm gonna turn it this way and repeat what I just did. I'm going to pinch all the way around. And then I'm gonna go up. And because I'm holding it uh, this way, it's gonna widen out a little bit. It'll be slow at first. But what I wanna do is create the body of that, of that piece. Actually, as I think about it, I think I will, um, I will um, be interested. I think I'm gonna not widen it out too much because I could, I could put two pieces together like this and get a, a nice shape for the body. So I've just changed my mind as I'm working. This is another technique here where I'm holding my thumb stiff and I'm rolling the piece over it to smooth it out and even it out. This is creating a, a kind of a nice uh, ribbing effect on the inside and helping thin out the piece beautifully. And I'll go over it and again, just uh, pinching with my thumb on the outside now. And just feeling the thickness, I can actually feel how thick it is. And there's places where I can feel, oh, it's a little bit thick there. I can push it a little bit more just to even things out. Now, as you can see, this clay is really quite soft. Another move is one where you take your finger and your thumb and on the inside, you just push your thumb upward. And that helps stretch things out even more. And it also um, thins, the, thins and strengthens the walls. So I'm gonna do that a little bit. Now you can see how flexible this is. In fact, if we flex it too much or handle it too much, it'll start to dry and crack. So you can see that whole flexibility there. And that's um, because this clay is so beautifully plastic. So I want to um, hold on to this now and uh, let it stiffen up. So I've got a little piece of damp terry cloth that I cut in advance here just for you. So it wouldn't take too much time with those kinds of preparatory things. So I want the terry cloth to keep the lip of my form a little bit damp while the rest of it gets a chance to dry. So that is how we'll do that. And then we have to do the same thing all over again because we need two pieces that we're gonna join together. So here I go. And so, and there's an important thing. I had an idea how I was gonna do this. I was going to make uh, the joining be along the body of the piece. So I was gonna have one kind of uh, elongated form uh, that was going to be um, joined one on top of the other to make the body of the piece. But what I realized is that it would be a better shape if I joined them uh, side to side. And so that's what I have done. I have made that change and, and that's okay to follow. You want to follow your instincts and your, you know, your insights that as you work, you will get uh, new ideas and you'll see how things are panning out and you'll come up with a better approach than you originally planned. And that is always the way. That's how we learn and develop new approaches. So now I'm going around again, and I'm making, I'm doing the pinching motions and usually going up around twice before I move up my, my work here. Now I'm going in the middle between the two pinches to even things out. So you can see it's, it's pretty even and um, it's a nice shape. It's a little shorter than the previous one. So I may have some more work to do because I can feel it's still quite thick. So I'm just gonna start the, now I'm doing that stretchy thing again and I can do it on the inside with my thumb and then I can reverse things and do it on the outside with my fingers, kind of lifting my fingers up and pushing my thumb down. And that creates a stretching motion that already you can see is starting to get it taller. It's very close to the same height of the previous one. 
And now I'm going to look at it as I go and see, well, where is it? It's a little bit shorter in some areas. I can build those out. And I can just look at it and see how it's developing and where it needs a little bit more attention, where it needs a little less. So um, it's getting close to uh, the place I want it to be in terms of thickness, and it's a little bit uh, floppy here. So I'm going to now I'm going to take and do my ribbing with my thumb. And as I'm working with it, I'm looking, I don't want any deep indents because that'll create a place where um, if I make a really deep indent, it'll be hard to, um, to clean it up in the end. I want it to be a very smooth surface when I'm done. So I don't want a deep indent. So that's looking pretty good there. It's about the same size. It doesn't have to be exact, but it looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna turn it in just a little bit, give me, myself a little bit of, inward on this. I do that on the other one too. Makes for an easier join, a little bit. And there it is, there's, you can see it's very soft. Take another piece of uh, terry cloth, put it upside down and make sure I have it in a shape I like because um, it's gonna dry and stiffen in that shape. So I wanna see that I have a kind of roundness and evenness I'm after. And then I'll set that there. Now we have other parts to work, work on. So let's see what I can find here. Now let's see, let's get this just a little bit more even. This is another move, which um, maybe you don't need so much for this, but I can use my finger on the inside like that. And you can actually, if you look closely, you might be able to see my finger moving on the in, outside. You'll see the, the movement of my finger. And that is um, a very, that's a great shaping technique. If you do it a lot, the piece actually starts to shape out like a, almost a pumpkin shape. So um, you can make those kinds of changes as well. There's all kinds of movements and you'll discover your own as you go. So there's, there's two of those. And now I just wanna make kind of an inventory of parts. So I'm gonna show you a few different techniques here for the neck of this piece. How does one do a neck? Well, the neck is tapered. So I'm gonna taper a piece of clay to begin with like that. And that looks about the right, maybe a little bit longer, not too much. And then I'm gonna take a dowel. I have a dowel here and I'm gonna push that, take this dowel and you can use the, the handle of your needle to the handle of your needle tool will work very well. And I'm just gonna push this right through the middle. I'm trying to get it to go. I wanna see it come right through the middle of this. And there it is, pretty good there. So you can see, and now I have basically um, clay on a stick here, like a marshmallow being skewered. And what I'm gonna do is just hold the dowel stiff and roll it across the board. And what that does, is it creates a beautiful hollow neck. And I don't worry about these edges because I'm going to uh, trim those uh, when, I'm, when I'm ready. I will trim those for, um, for joining the pot wherever I need it to join. So that one's done. So I take another piece of uh, terry cloth here. And this one will be very useful. I'll put that there. And then I need some legs. And I'm just thinking maybe kind of little gumdroppy legs, little, little legs like that. Um, I can't, I remember when you work with clay, you don't want skinny, uh, thin uh, forms. They don't tend to, they tend to snap and break off, but that's pretty, um, pretty solid. And so, and the legs in the front are a little bit longer than the legs in the back in this, in this shape. So I'm going to see what I can do to get little tapered kind of gumdrop legs there. That looks good. There's two. See, and I'm putting them so that the end of them 
stays damp on the terry cloth towel while the rest of it can dry up a little bit. I need some smaller pieces. And when I'm when I'm rolling them, I hold my hands with the edges, the bottom of the edges together and kind of compress the clay in it. And that makes a natural angle. Um, so you get a carrot shape, um, which is what I want here. Nice little carrot shape. And I want these to be shorter than the ones I just made. These will be the back legs and they, they're gonna be shorter. So that looks pretty good there. And I'll do the same here. The little details like ears on the head, I don't worry about because those um, those are small enough. And if everything else is stiff and holding together, then the ears will be, um, they'll hold themselves. Yeah, I can put them on soft and they'll be just fine. So I've got legs now. I've got, um, I've got a neck. I've got the body. I still need, uh, I've got the neck of the piece, but I need the, the neck of the opening on the body leading to the lip. So I think for that, if I'm gonna do that, let's see what I can get. I could do that with another pinch pot, or I could try this rolling method for that as well. Um, I don't think I want it too tall, so let's take some of that off. So as I was saying before, pinch pots um, uh, is a great way to learn uh, the idea of keeping things even. And when you're throwing on the wheel, you're holding your hand steady as, as the clay turns around with the, the, the real intent of keeping things even. Um, and so a pinch pot will teach you about how important it is to treat all of the piece equally all the way around. And that's uh, very central to throwing as well as to many other aspects of pinch pots for sure, if you want some kind of symmetry. Um, so now I've got this marshmallow shape here. Once again, I'm gonna push this um, dowel. And again, you can use the handle of your needle tool. You can use the dowel uh, and push that through. And then I'm gonna, again, you'll see me do this. I'm just gonna push that, roll that. And because I'm holding onto the stick, it's naturally creating a, it's extruding the clay right through um, as I do this. It's kind, of, it's kind of pushing the clay through. And if I wanna get fancy, say I wanna lip on the edge here, I'm gonna try this and let's see how this goes. Um, I'm gonna take this and I'm going to, move it over here. This is the edge you can see. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to hold this right over the edge. Can you see that there? And I'm going to push down a little bit and roll it. And what that's going to create is a kind of a lip. It creates a kind of lip. It's a little bit irregular, but we'll see. I might have to uh, erase that or reinforce it. And I can actually bring my thumb in here and and roll it around and even it out that way. Let's see, I'm just gonna speed that out a bit. So now I have uh, the neck and I won't worry about the handle because that's something I would add on later anyway. So I have the parts and this is basically part one of our project. We'll have a second video when these are leather hard where I show you how I put them all together and we'll learn about the joys of scoring and slipping uh, pieces and putting them together. So that's the start and I look forward to showing you uh, part two of this project.